We are expert at ensuring execution of 100% test coverage of all use cases and verifying the actual results against the expected results. But for LLM chatbots, there is no such thing as code coverage and no such thing as expected results. What is a tester to do? Thank you and the 20,000 plus testers and innovators like you who signed up for TestFlix 2024. And thank you for joining this session on mastering LLM chatbot testing, metrics, methods, and mistakes to avoid. In 15 minutes, we will cover what LLM testers need to know, test coverage, expected results, and more as we head into 2025, including standard chatbot components like knowledge graphs, vector DBs, and RAG, evaluating chatbot performance with standard industry metrics like rouge and blue, chatbot troubleshooting, what are all the reasons that a chatbot might give a wrong answer or even no answer? Analyzing chatbot failures. Now by failure, I mean something worse than a wrong answer. I'm talking about responsible AI guardrail failures that cause major, perhaps existential risk. So let's put 15 minutes on the clock. I'm James Massa, your chatbot testing co-pilot. Let's get into chatbot. Let's test it. Let's, 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 let's go. Let's look first at the standard chatbot components that will help us understand what errors a chatbot can make and where the errors can occur. Now you may be interested to know that many of the chatbots we use in our daily lives are composed of multiple LLM agents that I will call micro chatbots. Each micro chatbot specializes in answering questions about a specific domain. The advantages of micro chatbots are independently tested against its own set of performance metrics thresholds that define quality for that micro chatbot, subject to its own risk policies enforced by its own LLM guardrails, owned and maintained by an independent team, independently scaled and secured, independently architected in its own tech stack. So when a user poses a question to a chatbot, the chatbot needs to route the question to the correct micro chatbot that specializes in that type of question. A knowledge graph makes that routing work. A knowledge graph represents data with nodes and edges like a molecule. For, for a chatbot, the nodes are typically noun entities like rocks, people, animals, etc. If I ask what the hardest stone is on earth, the chatbot will use standard natural language processing NLP libraries to extract the entities stone and earth. Then it will look up stone and earth in the knowledge graph to see which chatbot uh, knows about the stone and the earth and the geology chatbot would be the one and route to and request to the geology uh, chatbot. So if your chatbot can't answer questions completely off topic, perhaps it's routed to the wrong micro chatbot that isn't prepared to answer such questions. It's important that your test scenarios test routing to each micro chatbot. That's full coverage of the micro chatbots. To help with testing, your log files can say which micro chatbot answered the question and based upon which entities it answered the question. It's good to test tricky routing scenarios to ensure that questions about Apple's route to the fruit micro chatbot and questions about Apple, the company, route to the computer micro chatbot. Now, moving on to how company micro chatbots answer company specific questions. The micro chatbots determine intent and formulate a prompt to an LLM. One of the most common prompt types is text to SQL. Text to SQL is used whenever the answer to the question requires looking up in a database. So text to SQL means taking the user question and reformatting it as a SQL statement with an LLM and then executing the SQL statement and returning the results. The LLM is only to create the SQL statement. Now, let's imagine that a user asks how much it will cost to purchase a luggage rack and a cup holder for car model A. The micro chatbot will use NLP to extract the car model and the two products and understand the intent to get pricing. Then the micro chatbot will prompt an LLM to generate SQL based upon example pricing SQL called FewShot. An example in the prompt is called a shot and FewShot is a few examples. Those few examples helped the LLM understand what the output should look like. The micro chatbot then verifies the user's entitlements and then executes the SQL and the logs and logs the SQL. The micro chatbot verifies the user's entitlements and then executes the SQL 
and logs the SQL for later testing. Finally, the micro chatbot feeds the SQL results to another LLM along with original user question and asks for an English response to forward to the user. Text to SQL is how the chatbot answers questions from the company database. But what if the question requires finding a company document and pulling the answer out of the document? In that case, the chatbot will use RAG technology. That's Retrieval Augmented Generation, RAG. Now, before I explain RAG, let's note that the chatbot could route DB questions to a text to SQL micro chatbot, route company document questions to a RAG micro chatbot, and route general industry questions directly to an industry LLM like GPT-40 from OpenAI. Now, RAG works like this. First, all the company documents are prepared in advance to be searchable. A library, perhaps Langchain, chunks up all the documents in the search space into snippets of text. The chunks can be big or small. That's something to optimize through testing. Next, the chatbot creates an embedding from the question and searches through the category's documents for a chunk with a similar embedding using an algorithm called cosine similarity. A gentle reminder, that only documents that are, the user is entitled to are searched. Finally, the chatbot returns the document chunks that most closely match the question along with citations so that the user can view the chunk in its full context and know the source of the answer. This eliminates most hallucination concern, but it's important to test the citations. Either the raw chunks may be returned or an LLM can format the chunks in the form of an answer that most naturally answers the original question. Some chatbots ask the user to give feedback on their performance, and this info is used to fine tune the training of the underlying LLMs. In my experience, testing this reinforcement learning feedback loop is a manual process of comparing the baseline model results to the fine tuned model results and determining if the fine tuned results address the user feedback. This brings us to evaluating chatbot performance. Chatbots are made of black box NLP and, NL and LLM components, so there's no such thing as 100% test coverage. In lieu of 100% test coverage, we need to go for a risk-based approach. It's up to the tester to determine the most critical scenarios to test for. Furthermore, LLM results are non-deterministic. It means that they give different answers, perhaps very different answers, to the same prompt on every inference run. Thus, we cannot count on exactly expected results, something we've always exactly expected. To address this challenge, we can create a suite of approved answers to important questions. We can create these approved answers with a baseline chatbot version, and then a person must approve them. When we test a new chatbot version, we can send the old and new results to algorithms that produce performance metrics called Rouge and Blue. We can deploy the new chatbot only if the Rouge and Blue metrics are above threshold. If the Blue metric is good, it means that when the chatbot is able to give an answer, its answer is very close to the approved answer. A good Blue score means good precision, which is a confusion matrix term, if, you're, if you've heard of the confusion matrix or want to look it up, i.e. few false positives if the Blue metric is good but potentially some false negatives. If the rouge metric is good, it means the chatbot is good at returning the correct answer. It means it returns most true positives, but potentially some false negatives. Rouge measures are called recall, again, from the confusion matrix. Don't be confused by that. A final point on the non-deterministic nature of LLMs is that they have parameter settings like temperature that control how humanly different the answers are versus how formulaic they are. It's important to test the chatbot temperature to ensure that it's on brand for your chatbot. Finally, let's round out this discussion by addressing how we can prevent our chatbots from giving a low price that doesn't exist or an embarrassing answer that hurts our reputation. The answer is guardrails on both prompts to and answers from the chatbot. You can think of it as responsible AI firewall that filters out dangerous or malicious prompts and also filters out the horrible answers. Advanced guardrails can use both rules-based and AI-based analytics to filter out bad prompts and bad answers. And of course, guardrails must be tested. You will find that your 
governance folks in the AI space will be very, very focused on the guardrails. They will say, how do you know that you have not hallucinated? The answer is often, we have guardrails for that. If you have further questions, please do message me on LinkedIn. I'd be happy to answer. Please go forth and conquer.